In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to take a full 3D model and import it into the software. We're then going to show you how to unwrap it and then wrap it again. And then we're going to show you how to create 3D tooling for it so that you can cut it out on a machine. So this is what we're heading for. But for now, let's start off by creating a new file. So let's come up to file and close. Okay, so let's start by opening up a new file. So let's click on create a new file. Now job setup, we're going to set our job type to rotary. We want a length of 12 inches and a diameter of four inches. Now it's important to note here that what the job is doing here, you'll notice we've got a flat worksheet. That's because the software has taken our job length and it's cut it along that to unwrap it flat. So what will happen is currently we're working on a flat surface, but the software, when we go to preview, it will actually wrap this around fully uh, depending on the orientation that we choose here. Of course, our units are set to inches. Our z-zero position is set to the cylinder axis. Now, you could set it to the cylinder surface if you knew there were no imperfections on your material. But in my case, I'm not confident that my uh, material is smooth all the way around, so I'm going to use a cylinder axis. XY datum is in the bottom left-hand corner. And for, as for my orientation, I've set it to along the x-axis. Now, this will depend on your machine. Now, if you are not sure how to orientate uh, your design on your machine uh, or uh, which axis your machine wraps around. You can always call your machine manufacturer. In some cases, uh, it's actually quite obvious by just looking at the machine. But if you're not sure, you can always contact the machine manufacturer. But in my case, I'm going to orientate it along the x-axis, which means I'm wrapping around the y-axis. And in terms of modeling resolution, I have it set to very high and I'm going to click OK. OK, so now we're just going to take a look at what the software has actually done for us during this setup. So if I just tile our views left and right, if we come to the top here, there's this button you can click here to tile our views vertically. And I'm just going to turn on our material block here so you can see what's happening. So you can see here that we've got our cylinder. And if you follow my mouse pointer over to the bottom left here, you'll notice we've got our job dimension set up for it. So we've got our width of 12 inches. We've got a height of 12 inches, which is actually the circumference around this here. And we have our depth, which is actually half of our diameter, which is two inches up and down. Okay, so now we actually need to bring in some 3D content to unwrap. So with that, let's go over to our modeling tab and we're gonna click this button here to import a component or 3D model. Now, it's important to note that this model that we have here is actually uh, one of Rhino's uh, demo models and we can't unfortunately give this away but you'll still be able to use the information that we supply here and you'll be able to take away um, a lot of information from this tutorial uh, using this so that you can apply it to any models that you import yourself. So with that I'm just going to go ahead and open up this file. Okay so with our model now in the software let's maximize our 3D view and we're just going to have a look at it in the y-axis here if you just click on the y at the very top here now you'll notice there's a blue kind of box around our model here and that's effectively a bounding box and what the software has done is it's tried to place our handle here within our material to get the best use of it to get the most out of our material now with that said the software has actually done a pretty good job of trying to lay this out, but I think if we spend a couple minutes extra on this, we could make it look a little bit better. Now, you'll notice that you have the model here in blue. The axis here is represented in red. This is the axis here. And you'll notice there's an arrow on the left-hand side here, and this represents the Z-axis, so where your cutter will be coming down to meet your cylinder. Now, when we actually imported the model, um, because it was a non-native format, it opened up our Orientate 3D model form here. And we can use all of these options to help better uh, our position of our 3D component in our material. Okay, so now if you look at the top here, we've got this option for imported model type. And it says full 3D model or flat model. So you need to uh, tell the software whether this is a full 3D model or a flat model. Now in some cases, you're going to want to bring in a flat 3D model and unwrap it. Uh, maybe to wrap it onto another surface, but in our case, it's a full 3D model. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that this full 3D model option is 
selected. Next, we have the initial orientation that the model comes in at. Now, you can actually play around with these options. You've got all these options here, as well as rotation about the Z axis. But let's just go through these one by one, have a look at what it actually does to our model. So if I click on right, that's not quite the best use of our material, I think. Front's not so bad. Bottom is just the opposite of the top. Left is just the opposite of right. And our back, it's not too bad either, but again, opposite of the front. But I suspect in our case, the top will probably be the best use of our material for the moment. And we'll have a look at moving our model around in a bit further depth in a moment. Um, in regards to rotation about the Z axis, you can actually rotate this in plus 90 degrees, plus 180 degrees, and you can also come back and then rotate it minus 90 degrees and minus 180. But for now, I'm going to pop it back at zero. Now, we, the next option on our form is the interactive rotation. Now, you notice it currently is set to view and X, Y, Z. And what that means is currently you can view it in X, Y, Z. You can move it around. And the crucially, the model within our bounding box here isn't moving. So let's just reset that by clicking on our Y axis there. But you'll notice if I go to the model section here and then click on X, Y, Z, when I now click and drag, I can move this freely within X, Y, and Z. So I can move that around now freely. I'm just going to hit Control Z on the keyboard to move it back to its original position. But similarly, if I go to X, I can rotate this around. You can see I can rotate it in a circle around there. I'll just Control Z that. And if I go to Z, you'll notice that I can rotate this around the Z axis as well by clicking, holding, and dragging my mouse around there. And again, just control, control Z to get it back to its normal position. But in this case, we're actually going to look at it in the Y axis. So we're going to make sure we're going to rotate this in Y. So what we can actually do now is actually bring the back of this handle down to try and hide our cylinder axis within our handle here. So I'm just going to drag this down just a little bit. I'm going to try and hide the axis within this just a little bit. So you'll notice there, you can still see a bit of the red there and our bounding box has reflected the change as well. I'm just going to keep going just a little bit more, see what I can do with this. I'm just going to move it up just a little bit. Okay, so so far that looks pretty good. And if I go back over to my XYZ now, to the view option, if I move it to the back, you'll see that in the front, it's actually still in the center. You've got our axis still in the center of our model here, but it's not quite in the center for our uh, back end or the bottom of our handle. Now that can actually cause just a little bit of problems. And sometimes this is the best that we can do. And you will have a few undercuts that you're going to have to work with because the software, when we unwrap this, um, it will try to fill the space uh, between the material and the axis here. And the fewer undercuts we have, the better. So um, if this happened to be a model of a figurine or something like that, you may not be able to position it in a way that there are no undercuts at all. And you may just need to work out uh, work that out in the end. But for now, I think we can actually do a slightly better job um, of moving this around. So what we're going to do is have a look at moving this just a little bit more. So what we can do is we can look at the next option in our form, which is the rotation axis movement. It's currently set to off, but I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. I'm just going to move this around. If I turn that on. If I just zoom in a little bit now. Now, if I just carefully rotate this around so we get to the bottom of the handle again. Now, what I'm going to do is you can currently see that I can't actually manipulate this axis, but if I hold control, and then click on it, you'll notice I can now move this around freely while holding control and holding on my mouse pointer. And I can just let that go in a place that feels appropriate, which is about there. And if I just have a look there, what I'm looking for is to make sure that the axis is really buried in to the bottom of the handle here to prevent the undercuts. And that looks pretty great at the moment. I am going to just adjust this just a little bit more though, just to see if we can get this kind of red just 
access section just a little bit further down here. So it's really buried at the end there. So just make sure I can really get rid of the most that I can there. Yeah, there we go. That looks that looks quite nice. So if I just go back to the Y axis there, there we are. And that's helping us prevent undercuts now. So that's that's really, really good. And I can just go ahead and now click off the rotation axis movement. We can freely look at our model here. Yeah, and that looks that looks really nice. We've got the axis buried in there. And that'll make for a much nicer end cut. Here's another example of when we should try to get rid of any undercuts or try to align our model better so that we can alleviate as many undercuts as we can. It's important to remember that some models, it will just be impossible to do that and you may end up having to remove it by other means, maybe after the part is finished or breaking up your part into several pieces. But we want to try our best to hide that rotational axis inside your components. So let's have a look at this table leg. Now you'll notice that there's a bit of a dip here underneath the axis on the table leg. Now the problem with that is uh, we're gonna have lots of undercuts going on and we'll get a pretty strange looking model in the end. So by using a combination of our interactive rotation and moving our rotation axis, we should be able to get rid of most of that. So right now I actually have the view set to the Z axis. And so with that, I'm also going to set my interactive rotation on the model to the Z axis as well. And I'm just going to move this up just slightly from the back here. You'll notice that the back end of it is just moving up to about there. And then I'm going to turn back on our interactive view because then I'm going to look at using the rotation axis movement to move this uh, axis within our component. So let's just go ahead and click on rotation axis movement. And we're just going to gently bring this view around so it's in the Z axis roughly. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is hold control, if you recall from our last example. I'm just going to move that down to try and bury the axis within our component as best as I can. Now you can see at the back there, the very bottom of the table leg though, you can, you can see it's popping out just a little bit. So I'm just going to move it up a little bit. About there seems right, but to double check, what I'll have to do is to turn off the rotation axis movement and let's have a look at it in the view. So let's just rotate this around. Let's have a look from the top here. So what I'm looking out for here is I'm trying to make sure that there's not the axis isn't coming through the top here, right? So what what you may see when you're moving your rotation axis movement, you may see after you turn it off and go back to view it that you've got just a little bit of red kind of uh, coming through the top here, and that's not what you want. So you can always adjust it manually again by turning it the rotation axis movement uh, on and moving that cylinder around. I'm just going to check it around here as well. And just check it from underneath. Okay, that looks pretty good right now. It looks like it's, it's buried in there quite nicely. And there's one more thing I would like to point out, and that's because of where our rotational axis is and the way your CNC machine will work. That any details that are close to your rotational axis may have a hard time getting cut. So just keep that in mind when you're designing a part. Okay, so with that said, Let's head on back to our handle model. Okay, so now that we're back on our handle, we need to look at our model scaling on our form here. Now, right now, this uh, model is actually very, very large. And chances are that when we imported this model, it was done so in units. Now, if we change our model units to millimeters, it'll be 170 millimeters, which is roughly around four inches, which will be right. But keep in mind that it'll still say inches next to our model diameter because our job setup is currently in inches. And that seems about right. So now if we look in our 3D view here, you'll notice we've got this red box around, or a red cylinder, I should say, around our model. And that actually represents our material and the blue lines here represent our bounding box. So we need to have a look at trying to fit our handle inside of this red cylinder just here. 
Now we can actually use the settings here to change the numbers and you'll notice that the uh, lock ratio option has been checked. So that means if I change this value here, the value for the model length will also be changed by a similar amount or the same amount sorry, that this is changed by. But we could also use this option here to scale model to fit material. So let's just click on that and let's see what we get. So as you can see here, what it's done is it's put our model within our red cylinder. So it scaled it down to fit within that. But I'm gonna make the model length just a bit shorter actually, because I want to have some extra material around it, just so that we have a bit of uh, room for error uh, if we need to do any finishing. So I'm actually gonna change the model length down to 10 inches. And you'll notice now that I've got a bit of room around our model. Um, so there's a little bit of extra material left around it for any extra finishing, but also um, allows us to have a, a bit more margin for error there as well. So with that, I'm quite happy. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click OK. OK, so as you can see, this is our 3D handle. It looks pretty nice. Let's just turn that around a bit. And there we are, you can see being machined quite well. Now, if you're worried about the jaggedness that's happening here, don't worry, the software will catch up. And there we are, smooth all that off. So it's just, software just loading that in, loading the graphics in, just catching up a little bit. So that jaggedness will go away momentarily. And there we are, you can see that nice smooth handle you've got there, that's our preview. So I'm just gonna turn off the material block here so you can see that nice and clearly. And there we are, I think that looks pretty great. Now, just for a second, I'm gonna turn this view off here just to show you what the software is actually doing. So if you recall earlier in our job setup, I explained that what the software is actually doing is it actually takes a three axis part, which is what this is, and wraps it around so that the ends end up touching each other. So what you get is this, which is the result of that uh, flat three axis part being modeled and then wrapped around the axis that we defined earlier to get this. And you'll see that we haven't got any undercuts happening here. Um, and there may be a little bit of extra material at the end here that we need to machine off, but there shouldn't be too much trouble for us to take care of afterwards. Now, many of you watching this, this tutorial may be wondering, uh, well, how is this handle actually going to stay on the machine correctly because it doesn't have any tabs currently on it. So that's what we're gonna look at doing next is we're gonna add in uh, some tabs so that when we come to machine this, this doesn't just fall off um, our machine so that it'll stay on nicely so we can cut those tabs off at the end and finish uh, our handle nicely and smoothly. So let's have a look at what's actually happening here on our bottling tab because this is, this is going to be crucial to adding in our tabs. So you can see the software has brought in our uh, unwrapped model of the handle as a component and it also gave us a zero plane. So we're going to just switch the combine mode of our handle to merge. So we just go to combine mode and merge. And then we're gonna come up to our zero plane and we're gonna add a height to it. So we come up to the component properties and we're actually gonna add a base height to this. So if I put in a base height of let's say 0.5 inches, press space on the keyboard. And you notice now that we have this large tab going through the middle of it, but it's a bit too large, it's actually protruding from the handle quite a lot and I actually don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna change the size of this down just a little bit. And there we are, so I've put it down to 0.25 there and now we've got our tabs ready so that this won't fall off the machine when we come to actually cut it out. But the machine will still come down to meet the top of the tab there, cut around it and that also means it'll allow us to be able to safely remove our handle from our machine. So with that, we can now close out our form. Okay, so all that's left now is to actually get some toolpaths ready for our handle. So if we click this button here to go over to our toolpath menu, and as usual before we do any toolpath, we need to make sure our material setup is correct. So let's click on set, and our diameter is four inches, our XY datum is in the bottom left hand corner. The Z zero is off of the uh, center of the cylinder. Now, in regards to the model position and material, you notice we've got a little bit of gap outside the material and that's because 
we were going to leave that behind because we're not sure if the material is perfectly even all the way around or if there's any inconsistencies. So that gives us a little bit of margin for error. So we don't have any inconsistencies when we finally come to cut our handle itself. As for rapid Z gaps above the material, you need to make sure that these are correct for your particular machine settings. But in this case, I am going to change my Z gap above material to quarter of an inch. And I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. Right, I'm just going to change our view just a little bit, get it back in Y there. And there we are, that looks great. So now we can have a look at looking at our toolpaths. So because this is a 3D component, I'm actually going to use two 3D toolpaths, a 3D roughing toolpath and a 3D finishing toolpath. So let's look at our 3D roughing toolpath first. So let's go up and click on 3D roughing here. And it's important to select the right tool for the job. So let's click on select. And I'm going to choose my quarter inch ball nose. I'm just going to click select. Now, you'll notice I had some settings there for the tool, but I'm going to change the settings for this job in particular. So I'm going to click edit. I'm going to change some of the settings just here. So I'm going to change the pass depth to 0.25 and I'm also going to increase the step over to 40%, but the rest of the settings look okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. So we're going to use our full material, sorry, model boundary. We're not going to have a boundary offset, but we are going to leave a little bit of material behind just in case we have any chipping and this will allow us uh, some material to remove also when we run our finishing pass. We're going to use uh, Z-level roughing. We're going to have profile last, order level by level. Don't need the raster angle on this one and I don't need any plunge moves, but I will just rename this to 3D roughing and click calculate. And now, of course, we have the option to preview our toolpath, which you should always do. So let's preview that visible toolpath. And there you go. You can see it's actually unwrapped it cut it and then wrapped it around again. There you go, that looks pretty interesting, but it is also what I expected to see. So that is what it's gonna look like when it finishes the roughing pass. So let's just look back on Y again. We can close our form and now we can look at our 3D finishing toolpath. So with that said, let's come up to our finishing toolpath. And this time I'm actually gonna change the tool. So I'm just gonna remove this one and I'm gonna use the quarter inch ball nose that I did for the roughing as well. I'm just going to edit the settings just a little bit, just have a check of these. Actually, no, I want to keep the step over 10%, so that's perfect. So let's click OK. Again, using the model boundary, not using a, a, a boundary offset. But in this case, I am going to raster it, and I want to keep the raster angle at zero degrees. But it's important to note here what it's going to do. The tool at this current raster angle will go all the way across our handle Rot rotate the step over distance and then come back again and then rotate the step over distance and then come back again. But if I change this to 90 degrees, for example, what will happen is the tool will come down and do the full rotation, go along again, full rotation, along again, full rotation. So in this case, I actually want to keep this at zero degrees. Now, obviously here you can choose an angle uh, if you're using raster that suits your machine machine best. But for me, I'm going to keep it at zero and I am just going to call this 3D finish, hit calculate. And it might, might just take a bit of a moment to calculate this as I'm using a small tool uh, and there's a lot of detail involved on this finishing pass. And again, you can see that's our toolpath ready to go. So we've got it highlighted. So let's preview that visible toolpath. And again, it unwraps it to finish it off and then it'll wrap it again. And there we are, there is our finished handle. Now at this stage, you could have a look at your model and see if it needs any uh, further detail, perhaps the smaller tool, but I'm actually quite happy with how this turned out. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually quite, quite happy with the result. And as you can see, you can remove your tabs nice and easily here as well. So let's just zoom back to our Y view there. And at this stage, you can now save off your tool pass if you would like to, but I'll refer you to the uh, introduction to Wrap Rotary Text on how to do that and how to use the post processes uh, for rotary uh, tool pass saving. Now, at this stage, I would save this file, but as I mentioned earlier on in the demonstration, that this is a file that we use from Rhino 
so I will not be saving that due to their license agreement, but I would suggest you source your own model uh, for this tutorial and give it a shot. See if you can follow it along and then you can try and machine it yourself and see uh, the results for yourself. But with that, that concludes this tutorial. I hope you have found it very useful. And of course, I will leave some other useful tutorial links in the description below for you, along with the introduction to Raptor Rotary Tech, so you can see how to save off uh, Rotary Toolpaths. But I hope you found this very, very useful. And as always, we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you very much for your time.